Wow. I mean, I, wow, wow, it's lovely wow. to see you and thank you for coming in. I know. I mean, it's when you watch stuff like that, I, I, I'm, it's a different question that I was going to ask you the first time. What attracted you to him? <laughs> Honestly, his sense of humour and we first sort of got together on a TV show in Namibia. So we were living together for eight weeks in the desert and there were not that many options. <laughs> but also, I guess, regardless of what someone's like, you never think they're going to stoop as low as what he eventually did to you. Like, how you can't predict somebody's going to behave in such a way. Um, how are you feeling? Because this has been a long time coming. This is not an easy journey. It's not a well-trodden journey because this hasn't long been illegal, if you like. This is a relatively new thing that you're dealing with. How are you feeling now that you've come out the other side and he's convicted and he's behind bars? I mean, first of all, just really grateful. It wasn't until recently I realised just how hard it is to get a conviction for this sort of a crime. And it shouldn't be because it is such a painful, painful crime. But I just feel relieved. I feel like the right thing was done. And although it was really painful to have to go through what I did, I think it's making some form of a change in society and I can take some joy from that. Yeah. Um, you waived your right to anonymity over this, um, but with a crime like this, there is no anonymity. You are named, you are visible. And there is literally nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and so many people praise me for waving my anonymity and I am so grateful and I'm aware it was a brave move, but as you said, it was already out. Everyone I knew who I really cared about and loved, you know, my family, ex-partners, ex-colleagues, you know, at one point I felt like the postman probably knew about it. I felt like everyone that I was worried would find out knew and therefore my anonymity dissipated in that moment and it made sense to take a stand. So going back to 2020, right at the beginning of this, when you realised that this video was on the internet, I mean, there are so many layers of betrayal. There's filming you in the first place and there's sharing that video over WhatsApp and then there's eventually uploading it and profiting for, for, from it. Um, seeing that out there, what impact did that have on you psychologically, physically? I think psychologically it just really affects your self-worth. You're in a moment of what you think is love with someone who you've known for a long time and you really trust. And really, the whole time they were just having sexual intercourse with you to put a monetary stamp on you and to sell you on the internet. And that really affects the way you value yourself, I think. Mm -hmm. And following on from it, I was in a stage of grief. I would be at home a lot crying, I was drinking too much probably, my diet was all over the place and I ended up coming out in spots all over my face. I was actually hospitalised over Christmas because I had a cyst burst on my ovary and I just physically deteriorated at first, I really did. And I think people don't realise it's been two and a half years, but if I was sitting here two years ago, honestly, I would be a mess. Yeah. And what did you think about that reaction <clears throat> in court, arriving in a Rolls Royce, you know, sort of very flamboyant, clothes, singing to reporters, laughing. What did you think of that? Because, I mean, I think it was the judge said that, uh, that he'd, he'd really never seen such a lack of remorse. It was so disrespectful. And I think a lot of the police officers even said in their career of like 30 years, they've never seen someone turn up and act like that. And they deal with murderers, they deal with all sorts of people. And part of it was just offensive and painful to watch. But then another part of it was a bit like, there you go, world, this is him and this is what I've been dealing with. So at least everyone can see it. Um, part of the healing with things like this is being heard and being believed and getting that conviction and hearing the fact that he is guilty. Um, how important was that to you and how different would life have been if had that not have happened? Well, it was everything to me, realistically. I don't think I let myself comprehend how much was on the line until now. And in hindsight, if he had got not guilty, I would have lost everything. I was silenced for two years. I would have been silenced for the rest of my life. Mm. And I would have been cancelled, realistically, because everyone would have believed that I had something to do with that awful video. Mm. What effect does it... Cos Holly mentioned, you know, sort of mentally, physically... I mean, you have a career. Uh, and so what effect has that had on your, on your career? It's just been detrimental and honestly I got dropped by so many brands and it was heartbreaking to actually, you know, like when you're working with brands, you build a rapport with these people, they know you and 
it was heartbreaking to be dropped by so many people who I thought would support me. Mm. I haven't done any TV work since it happened and I always wanted to be a presenter. I was doing regular reality shows and it really affected my place in all of these shows. Mm. And if you compare my finances to before it happened and after, the drop is drastic and it really does show on paper. Mm. So you're, you've made the documentary and that was really important because not only did it give you that voice that you've been silenced for for two and a half years, but it also gave other women voices, other women who've had a similar experience to you. Yeah, so the documentary's out on Monday, 10 p.m. on ITV2, and firstly, you're gonna see my story in a way that no one could ever imagine. I've been documenting a lot over the last there few There are things years. that you couldn't say leading up to the trial and the conviction, yeah. but there are now things that you can say afterwards. Yeah, and it was so hard to hold my tongue all that time when I was having to see things on his social media channels, making accusations about me. Two years I held it in and you're gonna see everything. But mm. I also get to meet other victims. I get to meet other revenge porn charities. And we really delve deeply into, you know, this crime, the effect it has on people and how it's letting people down in society. Should Why the law be people? strengthened, do you Should, think? Should the yeah. law be strengthened? I think I want to campaign, honestly, to get, get taken out of the law that you have to have intended to cause distress. Because I think for anyone, if you share explicit images or videos of someone without their permission, it should be common sense that it will cause distress. So mm -hmm. hopefully I can help support Not Your Porn on campaigning to get the laws changed. Um, well done. I'm glad that you're sitting here now. You seem a lot stronger, that's for sure. It's obviously, you know, lit a fire in your belly to do this, to go on and help other people. And I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. The documentary Revenge Porn, Georgia vs Bear, as you said, Monday, 10 o'clock, ITV2 and ITVX.